Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all having a good Monday. I hope everyone's doing okay. I hope everyone enjoyed their weekend. I don't know about everyone else, but I am so, so, so glad that the pubs are finally open. I suppose it's good, but at the same time, it is crap having to sit outside, like, and it's freezing. And But do you know what? At the end of the day, we're still getting a baby, so who actually gives a fuck? I don't, see, as long as I've got a drink in one hand, I will brave that weather. As long as I'm at the pub in a beer garden and I have a drink in my hand, I couldn't care. Um, but I am quite glad that come like, like today, I think it's today, um, you're allowed to actually sit in a pub. So I'm really, really chuffed about that. Like I can't wait to just get back in the pub, see everybody and just, like I'm really, really looking forward to it. So today I wanted to do another murder, another murder mystery and makeup video as I haven't done them for a while. I've just like been so lazy and yeah, I've just been lazy. I don't really, I'm not going to make excuses for myself. I'm really not. So today I'm going to talk about the Scottish serial killer, Peter Tobin. But before I get started, eh, I just wanted to thank everybody who's subscribed to my channel. I now have over 300 and something subscribers. I'm nearly at 400 and I just, I can't believe that I started this channel um, April of last year and in such a short space of time I've managed to get that many subscribers and I can't I'm like why are 400 people or whatever want to subscribe and watch me like it, but it just I, I'm so thankful and I'm so grateful so let's just get stuck in so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start uh, and do my primer and I'm going to use this is my favourite, it's Rimmel 5-in-1 uh, Primer. It's just, it's my baby. So, let's get stuck in, shall we? So, Peter Tobin was born in Johnson, Renfrewshire in Scotland. He was one of eight siblings. He had four older sisters and um, three older brothers. It was reported that Peter Tobin was like a difficult child. And that he was quite like bad behaved in school and he was always being kicked out of school and getting into fights and you know that he was a very like a very kind of troubled um teenager and at the age of seven he was sent to like a boarding school or like some sort of like school for like kids that are like you know really really bad behaved um and they and he, he seemed to enjoy english um, and French uh, in that school and that's like the subjects he seemed to excel at um, so he was he got out of the Boston um, when he was 16 um, but in 1970 um, he was convicted and imprisoned again for burglary uh, once he got out he moved to Sussex in um, England and that's when he married uh, his first wife, who was 17 at the time. And her name was Margaret uh, Robertson. Um, and during this time, Tobin was working as a clerk, as a typist clerk. But in August 1969, they separated. And then a year later, they were divorced. Uh, and then Tobin started to date a nurse, um, a nurse who was... I think she was a couple of years older than him. Um, but they split up due to Tobin being very, very violent towards her, which obviously was a early sign of what was to come. But they had one son together, arriving a year later. But Tobin then in 1990 moved back to Bathgate, um, where they grew up. Um, no, sorry, he moved to Bathgate, and then he moved back to Johnson, where he grew up. Uh, and all all three of his wives that he was married to, like they've all said the same thing, you know, that he was very charming and very well dressed, but turned violent and sadistic. And you do tend to find that with like psychopaths or serial killers, they are very charming and they are very charismatic and and stuff like that. Um, but the reason that he was caught because in nineteen ninety three, uh, Tobin uh, attacked. A fourteen-year-old girl in a flat, 
uh, when she was visiting a neighbour, but the neighbour wasn't home. So Tobin had said, oh, you can come in here and uh, wait until the neighbour's back. Um, and Tobin attacked her and raped her, uh, forced her to drink a uh, strong cider and vodka, sexually assaulted her and raped her. Um, one of the girls managed to escape, but she also noted, uh, accounted that, that Tobin's son was present when Tobin was doing this. So it's like, you know, he's like carrying out these rapes and these attacks on these girls in front of his son. Like, that is, that's just like, that is like, who would do, like, obviously he's a psychopath, but it's even more gruesome that like his son, like, witnessed him do that. So that was in 1993. Um, uh, but that, that girl escaped and she went to the police and she obviously reported what had happened. They went out to Tobin's home um, and he was arrested. But the funny thing is, is Peter Tobin has also been linked to Bible John who was a serial killer in the 70s that was never, never caught in Glasgow. And Peter Tobin wasn't caught until the 90s when he was a bit older. And what I find is, like, no no person starts just... Nobody gets to 61 and goes, oh, I'm just going to start killing. He's obviously been killing for decades, for years and years and years, and it's just that one thing got him caught. But I think he could be linked to several murders around Glasgow, and I, I do think, as well as, you know, what a lot of other people think, that Peter Tobin was Bible John. Um, but what Peter Tobin would do was he would lure these girls, so he would meet them in clubs or he would pick them up or he would like befriend them, um, bring them back to his flat, uh, spike them with sleeping pills, sedatives, whatever. He would then rape them, strangle them and murder them. And, you know, it, it's the kind of same kind of idea um, with most serial killers, like, the more he killed, the more extreme he got and the more violent he got. Um, and a lot of his victims were really young girls, so on top of being, like, a murderer, he was also, like, a child molester. Um, which is, I don't know that, like, just a horrible, horrible, horrible human being. Like, I can't even fathom someone that thinks that way. Um, but he was then um, charged again and put in prison uh, due to the rape of a 14 year old girl but he was released in 2004 at the age of 58. He then returned to Paisley to stay, Paisley and Renfrewshire and went on to attack two more girls. Um, one of the girls is actually a family friend of my mum. Um, but she escaped because she was she was an ex army, and um, she managed to like fight, obviously fight Peter Tobin off. Like she was lucky, like she got away. Um, and so in two thousand and six, Tobin was working as a church um, clerk, like in a local church, just like helping out, you know, kind of stuff like that. Um, and one night, it was just him and one of the girls um, that was also doing the same job as him. They were just kind of closing up the church for the night, you know, um, getting the fit, everything ready for the next day. And Tobin decided to murder this woman in this church. He hit her over the head multiple times. Uh, it was actually known as, like, overkill. Um, like, oh, like overkill he then didn't even bother um, to like dispose of the body he basically just left this poor girl um, in the church and like do you know what I mean like well he buried her in the church but he, he like he hid her but it was like like it, it's mad to think like the cockiness of him to murder that girl and hide her in the church and this girl's missing for 
weeks and weeks on end and he is one of the people that's protesting to find her and helping the family and like, like just so that so 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 sadistic um it just just so so sadistic uh, he then also went on to work as a taxi driver for a few years and this was when he was living in paisley but he was going under different names so what is going on what is that noise shut up <laughs> there we are. um so what peter tobin used to do was he would move around scotland and england so he would commit a crime you know like rape or whatever he would get the jail for like a year two years a couple of months we put in probate like probation but then he would move to somewhere else and would go under a fake name and that's how i think he got away with his crimes for as long as he did but i definitely do believe the the conspiracy that peter tobin was bible john so if you've ever heard about bible john like research that and look into that and then Tobin and compare the cases that they're very very similar you know we the way the murders were conducted the age of the girls and even the description of what Bible John was meant to look like because they never found Bible John and um, they never found the guy that done that they only had a rough description about one of the victims was able to provide and it does look like Peter Tobin it really does and the way that they were like peter tobin used to like strangle his victims rape them and murder them so he would like lure a girl back spike her rape her strangle her stab her whatever it may be or he would like kidnap girls off the street and that's the same kind of things that the bible john murderer done and it has been like investigated and a lot of people do think that he was bible john they're like there's no way a man in his 70s or his 60s he decided to start murdering he's been doing that for a long 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 time and see to be honest like, i believe that as well i don't think the 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 three murders that like, like vicky hamilton or um that that girl from the church uh, or my friends well she she did escape um, but there's another girl in Paisley that um, that he murdered. I can't remember her name. But I don't think there's no way that he only had three or four victims. Like there, there's no way. He has to have like there has to be a past with him when it comes to stuff like that. Because there's no way he gets to that age and decides, oh, I'm just going to start murdering people. And the fact that before he did m murder. He was done with like child molestation and put on like the sex offenders register and stuff like that like he's been doing some shady shit and some criminal shit well before he was even caught by the police or was even charged like it has to be but the thing is as well it's like Like the one, I, I want to actually talk about the Vicky Hamilton murder because that's the one that he's actually best known for. So in June 2017, Tobin's old house in Bathgate was searched in connection eh, with the disappearance of this girl, Vicky Hamilton. She was last seen on the 10th of February 1991 as she was waiting for a bus home eh, near Falkirk. Tobin's believed, they say, to have left Bathgate for Margate a few weeks after her disappearance Pfft, how fishy is that um and on the 21st in 2017 uh, pl police had released a statement that they'd arrested and cautioned and charged a male in connection with the murder um but did not immediately confirm the name or the identity of the man then tobin actually stayed um in 50 Irvine drive in uh, margate and they actually found, once they had charged him um, and brought him in for question and they searched his house, they actually found, um, uh, this is horrible to even read, they actually found that he had buried Vicky Hamilton in his garden. And that is the murder that got him caught. But as I said again, like people think that, you know, there's, there's been a lot more murders and stuff like that when it comes to him. Um, but he was obviously... 
he was finally convicted on the 2nd of December 2008 and I, I can't believe like how recent this actually is um, but he gave but w w when he was charged he tried to challenge the court but like I mean come on all the evidence is stacked against you um, but see the more that they started like when, when Peter Tobin got caught for the murder of Vicky Hamilton the more they started to connect the dots so see all the all these kind of girls that had went missed like because peter tobin was known for like moving about he moved about for, like he's originally scottish from glasgow but he moved about because he moved about because of all the like shady stuff all the like shady stuff he was doing so when the police started like connecting you know the places that he had stayed and he had lived they started to go well girls went missing for the areas that he was staying at and around the time that he was living there such and such went missing so they started to connect the dots but when questioned um if there was any other girls or any other bodies he refused to cooperate but a lot of psychopaths and murderers they do that because you know they like the power it's it's, it's like a power thing you know like I know where they are, but I'm not telling you kind of thing. And Peter Tobin as well, um, in a police interview, um, he said to one of the officers, and this was recently, because they're still trying to get him. They're trying to get him. He, like, he is still like ongoing questioning because they think that he, that, that he has murdered a lot more than he's letting on. Um, and I think it was... A couple of months ago, it was in the paper that Peter Tobin had said to one of the police officers, I've got 10 more bodies buried all over Scotland, but I'm not going to tell you where they are or who they are. Do you know what I mean? So that just shows like the sadistic, like how sadistic he is that he can't even, you know, I mean, he, he he's in jail, he's going to die like, what is he getting from, like, give these victims family members, like, some peace of mind. Like, you're going to die, you're in jail. Why can't you just tell the police where the rest of these girls' bodies are? And as I said again, I think for people like him, it is a power thing. And it's about, you know, at the end of the day, he's sadistic and people like him... I'm not even going to try and understand like their their way of thinking because I I'm not ever going to understand. But it's crazy how everybody who knew him would be like, oh, he was such a nice guy. He was so charming. He was so sweet and da 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 da. But you know, what does a serial killer look like? Like, what what does a paedophile look like? Your normal average Joe. And I think. That's why people get really shocked when people like him do get convicted of these things because people that were his neighbour and knew him like, were like, oh, he came across so nice. But that's the um, psycho like the psychopath in him. Like, that's what they do. Psychopaths are very, very charming. I mean, you only need to look at Chris Watts um, to know that. Do you know what I mean? Like, to know that psychopaths are charming and that's how they come across but they mirror you because they lack empathy and Peter Tobin was um, psycho psychoanalyzed um, to see if he had any mental health issues and one of the doctors who was psychoanalyzing him said that he, he was a psychopath that he doesn't have any empathy he doesn't have any right for wrong he'll just mirror um, emotion and you find that's the case with with most um, serial killers and stuff like that, but um, but I want to actually talk a wee bit about my mum's friend. So my mum was friendly um, with a uh, with a girl that stayed in Paisley, and she was ex army. And what had happened was she was Peter Tobin's neighbour um, when he was when he was staying in Paisley, and she got quite she got quite friendly with him. And she, she said that it, it just seemed like a nice, sweet old man. Like, he would invite me in for tea or um, 
I'd be going out and he would stop and talk to me. He would ask me, you know, what my plans were for the day, you know, what I was getting up to, you know. She went, so I just thought, like, he was a genuinely nice man. She went, I would have never have thought he was capable of doing the things that he done. Um, so what happened with her was one night, um, they were going to... He had asked her if she wanted to come over to his house for a drink. And she thought, do you know what, why not? Like, I'm only a, a, like, a couple of doors up. You're my neighbour. You know, we know each other really well. You've never gave me any reason to, you know, to think that, like, to think suspiciously of you, you know. You're an old man in your late 60s. I'm a young girl, like, like come on, like, what's the worst that could happen? So, obviously, sh she went over to his house, started drinking, but then she said that she started to get a really, like, really weird vibe from him. Um, he started trying to kind of like come on to her and she said when she like kind of rejected him she said he got very very violent and angry and started like grabbing her and pushing her and tried to push her like up against a wall and strangle her but little did Tobin know that my mum's friend was ex-army so she was like really good with um, self-defence <laughs> So she basically kicked his ass and she got the hell out of there. Um, and she went to the police and he was charged with that as well. But then obviously when they'd searched his house, they found like um, other stuff to do with other victims. But because of her, that's how he got the jail for the last time. Um, because he was just moving about from place to place, just committing all these like heinous murders. And... Like, the length of time that he got away with it is, is crazy. Like, I can't believe that like, he didn't get caught until 2008, 2009, and he'd been doing this since, like, the 60s. Like, if if you believe that, you know, if you believe that he was Bible John, then, like, he's been doing this since the 60s. And I need to do my line or two seconds, guys. I can't talk and do this at the same time. I've actually got another like interesting story as well. Um, when Peter Tobin was staying in uh, Glasgow and he was living in Paisley, he was also working as a taxi driver. And my mum's convinced that she got in his taxi because my mum and her friend um, were in Paisley one night and they were coming home from the dancing. Um, and she said, obviously at the time, like she says it looking back now, she thinks it was him, but at the time she didn't realise. Um, her and her friend get in this guy's taxi and she said straight away, like she noticed that in the front he had like a hammer and all that. And she was like, she found it a bit weird, but never really thought to question it. And then she said that uh, the guy totally drove past the stop that they, they wanted dropped off at. So mum was like, you're, you're going the wrong way, like, where are you going? And he was just completely ignoring them. And then um, my mum said that's when she knew that something wasn't right. So her and her friend, knowing the way they were when they were younger, started, like, jumping over the seat and, like, attacking him and hitting him and all that and all that kind of stuff. Um... And then when and they, they stopped at traffic lights and my mum and her friend just like ran out the car. Um, my mum never went to the police or anything about this. I don't know why, but she didn't. Um, but she says, looking back, she thinks it, it might have been him. Um, and she feels lucky, you know, that, 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 that she escaped. And it's scary to think that Especially being from Glasgow, like, that somebody like him was so close to home and that he got away with doing what he was doing for as long as he did. You know, and it's, it's, it's scary. And I think the fact that, you know, the fact that he's in prison and, you know, he's a bit, like, he's old and he's going to die soon, I don't understand why you can't just tell where these other victims are buried. And I just think, I think the reason for that, when it comes to somebody like 
like like him is because he is a psychopath and you know he, he en- it's not I, I don't even I think he enjoys the power I think he likes having control over other people I think he enjoys you know being able to have that power and go to his grave basically like having the last laugh and as horrible as it is it, it, like people like him deserve to rot in hell like they really do and like, like you would think after everything he could at least say like okay do you know what like I'm going to die like I'm on my way out I may as well tell these people where the rest of my victims are but he doesn't want to do that so that that shows you like it, well, it shows anybody really you know how sadistic that man really really was and how even to this day when he's on his deathbed he is still refusing um, to tell people where the other bodies are buried and that to me is just that really just says it all about him. Like, in my opinion, it really, really does. And I just can't wrap my head around people like that. I just can't. Like, I don't get someone that thinks that way or, 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 or could take a human life like that. And, and even to this day, he wants to go to his grave having had the last laugh. And I just think, what a horrible, horrible, horrible man, like. But at least he's caught. Oh, that left fell. At least he's caught. Um, well, at least he got caught and he's in the jail. But I do think, I do think it's quite, it's quite sad that he won't tell the police where the other victims' bodies are. I think, I think that's really, really, really bad. I really do. Um, just sick so guys I hope you enjoyed this video um, please don't forget to like and subscribe um, I'll be back next week with another murder and mystery and makeup video just let me know or comment below what other murderers or serial killers or conspiracy theories you'd like to talk to me about and I'll pick one and I'll do it I hope you found some of this information information useful I hope you maybe learned something about Peter Tobin that you maybe didn't know before. And, you know, having that link to him through my mum and stuff like that, like, I'm glad to have shared that guy, uh, to share that with you guys. Um, but obviously you can find more stuff about him on the internet if you're wanting to find out more than read more about him and read more about his crimes and stuff. You can find it all on Google. But I hope you found this interesting. Um, and if you want to know more about them, just, as I say, go on Google and there's so much and it is just, you can go down a rabbit hole with it. I just didn't have the time to, like, I am limited on editing time here. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found some of the facts interesting and I, fo- I hope you maybe learned something that you might have not have knew. Um, enjoy the rest of your week, stay gorgeous and don't forget to like and subscribe. All my love, bye.